Mm-hmm. What's wrong with me? Jesus Christ, I look like I haven't I haven't combed my hair at all today or something. Oh, that's awful. I don't know what's up. Hello wonderful Linux fans and welcome back to our post-holiday series of Clueless Girl installs another Linux distribution. And this time around, uh, we are going to be finally looking into something that you guys have been craving for ages and have been telling me to install ever since I tried to uninstall... Uninstall? Uninstall? I think I tried to install Arch Linux before I uninstalled it. That will be a surprise. Okay. I just wanted to say... She protect, she attack, and she bat in a very brown shape and a form. If you can't really see, I am as brown as can be. I am happy, I am fully relaxed, and I'm ready to tackle some more Linux distros that don't really want to install themselves because the ISO files are actually a little bit too hard on my system. But more about that a little bit later, so make sure you actually stay in the video to look at my beautiful brown tan and uh, my awful burns that I need to live through and potentially in the Manjaro installation. Let's roll the intro. My hair guys, since since the whole holiday situation, my hair has just decided to do its own thing. It's decided it's not part of my body anymore. It's decided it wants to be its own independent woman and it's been hard to deal with. So please do forgive if my hair is just going. Please do forgive if my hair is just going all over the place. So. Let's just start with the start. Your girl decides she would install Manjaro because I promised it to you guys like five weeks ago or something like this. Although five weeks ago I haven't even started doing the YouTube videos, but that's another completely different. Story. You catch my draft, okay? Draft? My drift, I mean. <laughs> so uh, basically, girl goes onto the Manjaro official website amazing looking website by the way extremely sleek extremely nice everything is showing I mean everything that needs to be shown is being shown okay you can uh, select between the different Manjaro versions and you can read oh there's one with KDE there's one with Grub there's one with blah 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 environments that is so the way that your already booted OS is going to look like for the people that are not aware. I went ahead and I remembered from your comments that I should install KDE. So I'm like, oh my god, KDE it is. And what do I do? I download, I love it. Exactly. I downloaded it. <laughs> I put it on the USB. I burned the heck out of it. And I was ready to go and use Balina Etcher just in case I haven't mentioned it before. This is just a program that I'm usually using when I'm putting all of the, all of the dist different distros onto the USB stick. So everything was prepared, everything was ready. I didn't receive any issues whatsoever. I was like, your girl, she's gonna be at it again. She's gonna install one distro perfectly this time around. And she's not gonna have any problems. And this is when I knew I messed up. What actually happened is I booted the USB and obviously went into the boot settings just so you know it can actually boot directly from the USB. Everything was fine and I was expecting to see the installation Manjaro prompt thingy. You know, the thing that just says, hey, hello, what's up? How are you guys doing? I'm Manjaro, please install me or I steal your money never saw that. The only thing I ever saw was a black screen with big letters on top of it that said grub. And I figured out, okay, it looks like a sort of a console even. So I figured maybe there's some way to boot it. Maybe there's just something I can do so I can just continue on with the installation. I tried once, twice, three times. I did not manage. Basically nothing ever changed. Uh, everything it ever said was a grub in big letters, black screen behind it, nothing was booting. By which point I read from the Manjaro wiki that obviously, you know, when you actually want to boot it, the first thing that you see is the installation prompt thingy where it just says, uh, you know, keyboard layout, language, blah, 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 blah. That's the first thing I was supposed to see. 
and then I did my own research a little bit and I actually noticed that there had been some proper difficulties with Grub and Grub is basically the launcher of the whole system. Uh, the environment plus the launcher belongs to Grub and because of that a lot of people wrote articles about how to fix Grub and how to uninstall it or how to repair it but after you're already into the OS, into the distro and after you've already booted. With me the problem was I couldn't even boot, I couldn't even get so far. So practically I was sitting there and I'm like okay what did I actually do wrong? And my thought process goes maybe I just didn't really install the ISO properly but still it was going as far as to actually show me the big grub letters and I figured out maybe it's a stove, but maybe something went wrong, but maybe I ran out of space, which shouldn't be the case because I'm always using the same flash drive. I decided nevertheless to just go ahead and try to install that, or rather download, burn the ISO onto the USB and see what would come out of that. That was quite interesting because I burnt myself a few times as well on it. Basically, I deleted whatever other ISO installation packs there were on the USB drive and I decided to just make a clean sweep and install the ISO again. Every single time I tried to install or rather burn, I keep saying install, I should say burn, the burn the ISO onto the USB. Basically, the only thing that actually happened is the Balena Etcher said, of course, always towards the end of the installation because the program cannot let me know at the start of the installation that something's wrong. It detected my USB and managed to start burning it and managed to fetch the resources from my PC and managed to actually put the ISO onto the USB. But in the very end, it said that something was missing. I can't tell you exactly uh, the one-to-one -one, uh, message that it gave me, but it said something that's sort of like... I just kept trying. Uh, I tried it once and then the second time after I basically just cleared all of the different other ISOs that I actually had before and uh, it didn't work. And the only thing I could do at this point was to actually just sit down and think about where this could potentially come from given that it's not really from the USB. And I sat down and I thought to myself, I should probably just try installing Manjaro and GNOME together rather than Manjaro and KDE. That may be the reason why. Although there was actually no information as for that specifically online, it only said how to install or change grub directories and so on and so forth. But it was still weird because it was KDE and Manjaro. It wasn't supposed to be Grub and Manjaro, but anyway, your girl managed to actually take the ISO, throw it on the USB stick. So your girl burnt everything, threw everything onto the USB. It was finally fine. Balena Edger actually said in the end, I'm okay, I'm fine girl, you can continue. And gave me the thumbs up that everything was installed properly and I basically just took my USB, went on my merry way and decided to try and boot it. Now, this worked. <laughs> Actually, it worked. It prompted me to uh, the little selection to the very start of Manjaro and it asked me to select my keyboard layout, asked me to select my language and all of these specific details that were, by the way, already pre-selected for me, which was pretty nice. So I didn't even have to change anything. Uh, the menu looked quite minimalistic, or I should rather say the whole pop-up <laughs> looked quite minimalistic and it was fairly easy. And that was honestly the only thing. After I, I selected that, it just ran some code in the background uh, because it's also not a proper full installation. What I tried, it's just, literally going into Manjaro and Manjaro booting itself in a test environment. So um, yeah, I actually got as far. <laughs> I bypassed issues at the very start and I actually managed to boot Manjaro in the very end, which I'm really, really, really proud of. If this hadn't been an issue with the installation and this sort of failure, I think this would have been the easiest installation ever. The problem is that if you are not devoted to Linux to 100% and you have no idea what an environment is, 
and you didn't read up on it chances are you will be stuck in a loop and you wouldn't really know what to do <laughs> apart from that the installation took literally two seconds i am uh, literally looking at the screen welcome to manjaro right now and i want to continue and just record the next video for you guys so you can take a look into my own first look of manjaro and how things have been going from now but my very first installation process was actually a bit tainted by the fact that kd didn't quite seem to work out please do remember you guys when i say that something didn't work out for me i am saying this from the perspective of someone who has had nothing to do with linux before and i'm trying to put myself into the shoes of somebody who might not be able to resolve the issue because i also don't have the mental capacity to resolve the issue in linux because i haven't really dealt with it for so long i'm just trying to take the actions a standard windows user or a mac os user would actually undertake while trying to install a linux system for the first time and this is my honest review of it if i was stuck and i didn't really know what to do and i didn't really know where to look for resolving the issue or wasn't that computer literate i would probably have just left manjaro unfortunately and i would have just tried installing another distro that just crossed my mind and i wouldn't have known what the difference between the environments worst case scenario that would be the person you would have uh trying to install their distros and stuff like that so best case scenario they would actually know about the different environments and they would just try out the different environment which is what i did which is what actually got me into the login screen that was my mini story of what happened to me and how it happened <laughs> unfortunately i wouldn't be able to give the full thumbs up to manjaro unless uh, this thing gets cleared up i can't really say what the reason was for for this issue whether it was me or it was just the iso i have no clue honestly but uh, that was my personal experience so far and i am looking forward to recording the next video for you guys so you can actually take a first look with moa into manjaro with grub installed not kd just grub <laughs> and um take a look and see how friendly it actually is for new users and how it might work out for me if it does i'll let you anyway you guys thank you so much for spending this time that you have invested into my video i wish you an absolutely wonderful day and if you have any questions comments uh, blah 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 etc you know it all and if you got me some likes you can definitely let me know and plug these down below just so i can actually take a read and i can feel good about myself for actually having created a video that is of some value to you guys by the way we have just reached 5k subscribers today i am so very happy thank you so much you guys for subscribing and supporting us this truly means the world to us and you make everything possible you make us filming possible and us experimenting with linux so we are so very grateful to you and thank you so very much for all of your support we are looking to bypass 6k now 6k is the next one so you guys share like subscribe follow do everything social media blah 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 if you have any comments let me know down below thank you guys again and i'll see you in the future in the next one in our first look into manjaro bye